Welcome to Revolutionary Motion, where we show you tennis from a different perspective. Today we're going to talk about the importance of shadow drills. Shadow drills are used in many sports to perfect the movement. It's like learning a dance. And if you learn to make the movement perfectly without a ball, then all you have to do is just to adjust it to the rhythm of your game. I recommend to do this in front of a mirror or any reflect surface so you can see yourself. That way you can control what you're doing and you can see how it looks. By doing a lot of repetitions of the same movement, your body gets used to it and it can repeat it automatically. So then when the ball is gonna come to you, you won't have trouble thinking of, oh, where my arm should be, what height. You'll just have to do it automatically and then just focus on the ball, the timing, and just getting your racket to it. You can literally practice all the movements that you have to do on the court as shadow drills. Everything, your serve, your forehand, your backhand, your volleys, your footwork, everything. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you will feel doing the actual shot. And it especially works best if you're trying to change something and it's really hard to control it when you're focusing on the ball. But without a ball, you have all the time, you can take it slower and just see what is happening to your body as you do. And once you get used to it, doing it slowly, you can start to increase it and then have the right rhythm. And understand, like for example, that you, first you do the unit turn, you catch your position, and from here comes the swing. So you swing. If you need to practice your swing path, you can also just first move your arms through the ball, and then as you see you're doing it correctly, you just start swinging. Also, if you get the rhythm in the shadow right, like for example, you do the unit turn, and then you kind of have a pause, and then you do the swing, then you just have to understand at what time you have to swing, and it will immediately transform to the shot. Don't forget that it is very important to understand where your contact point is. So in that case, if you shadow all the time that your contact point is around your waist level, then you have to make sure when you move to the ball that you catch the ball in the waist level and then it will work. So you can also practice different contact points like a little higher than the normal one, lower one, and so on. Doing shadow drills might seem very boring and unnecessary, but you can't even imagine the effect it has on the game. You basically, by doing all these repetitions, you learn and you teach your body, you train your body. The best about shadow drills is that you don't really need a court to do it. You need just a space next to the court or any hard surface. You can do it even on the grass when you're waiting for a court or maybe even at home if you have enough space. As I said earlier, it's best if you have a mirror so you can see yourself, but sometimes you can just use the shadow on the floor so you can also see your movements. Well, it depends again on what you're working on. So now I'm gonna show you a couple of shadow drills that you can work and uh, work through and how you can work on them. So for example, it's really difficult to follow a pattern of doing it like, for example, a split step and then turning your shoulders. So you can do, for example, you can do a, a split step and then a shoulder turn, right? Split step, shoulder turn. That way you can practice your unit turn and make sure that you turn and bring your racket back at the same time. Same with the backhand and turn. After you turn, you can check where's your racket, is it high, what is the position of your shoulders, and so on. Once you perfected that, you can move on to the next step and you can do split step, turn, then you can see how your racket goes down and then the upper body rotation, bringing it forward. As I mentioned before, at first the rhythm doesn't have to really follow or copy your real shot. You can get to that as soon as you have a feeling that you're doing it all correctly or not a feeling, a vision of it. You can also, like if you don't have a mirror, you can take a video of your shadows and then see if you're doing them correctly. 
So as I said, the next step, and then you start swinging. When you got it right, try to swing. Same with the backhand. Drop the racket head, then rotate the upper body, see what's happening, and swing with the volleys. And my favorite is, of course, the serve. In the serve, you can practice all kinds of things. You can just practice moving your arm, having your surface of the racket go down behind your back. You see, now I'm checking my arm and I'm looking if my elbow is going up, if my racket is closed. Then you can stop in certain moments to make sure that you're going through the right positions and do it to a full extent. And once you do it slowly, you get used to it and you can start doing it faster. Also by adding the left arm as if you're tossing the ball, then adding your legs, everything bit by bit, perfecting the whole shot. And as I said earlier, repetitions does the trick. Don't hesitate to do the shadow drills and your game will become much better. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys soon.